lady over there. Oh, yeah, this gentleman here, then the lady over there. And I, I shall look over on this side. Yes, I think the question was, what makes great political novels? To my jottings just now, there was someone who made me think of all my views. Now, in my case, it was all, without a doubt. I mean, this is 50 years ago when I was at school, and my best friend at school was G.B. Shaw. But the other novelist I read extensively, and it's had no effect on me whatsoever, was even in war. Does that, would that mean, for example, that even more wasn't a great political novelist? I don't know how you feel about that. I personally think that um, Scoop, uh, which is uh, one of obviously a light a comic novel, is, is, is deeply political. And as a political journalist, especially one who travels, I've just come back from <laughs> Afghanistan last week, um, Scoop has a lot to say. Uh, now, the lady over there, yes. Um, are you still looking for suggestions for non-political novels? Mm. Yes. <laughs> I wondered if perhaps Wuthering Heights, um, Charlotte Bronte, uh, which I think is a, is, a, is a wonderful, wonderful novel, but I, I can't perhaps see that it's political. Anyone on the panel prepared to make the case for Wuthering Heights as a political novel? <laughs> <laughs> no? No, I think we, we have a lot. <laughs> Yes, yes. Let's have a look over this side. Yes, a gentleman raising his glasses at the front here. Could I Hold on a second, Mike, just coming your way. Could anyone on the panel write a political novel whose central, a worthwhile novel whose central problem could be solved by an act of parliament? <laughs> Until um, a few years ago, I, I would have thought any novel about the struggles of a, a gay man uh, to come to terms with and to live within the society uh, in, in which he lived uh, was something that could have been, if not solved, significantly alleviated by the Act of Parliament, and, and we now have it. Any other suggestions from the panel? Um, I, I know Kathy Campbell is a TV film rather than a, a novel, but I mean, that's an example of something that in effect was solved by um, a broadcast of the um, issues of um, homelessness. It was actually um, directly addressed. To some extent, a woman of her heart is getting at the problems of current divorce. The Woodlanders, yes, yeah. Mm. Right, lady here in the multicolored. I think we need to be very careful. Um, the gentleman there was drawing the distinction between sociology and politics. And then there was the discussion about to what extent the novels about the political machine, imaginations of politics or political novel. But I think you need to be very careful about going down that road. I would suggest, for example, that one of the best-selling so-called political novels at the moment is one Geoffrey Archer. Now, I would not consider that he writes at all well, and he doesn't even write novels, but many people consider it as that. Many of his involved politics, there's no way he's a political novelist. A political novelist, to me, is somebody who makes one think, who challenges. You said, could you get on, could you, could you understand a book where the politics were completely different from your own? Yes, I could perfectly well do that and disagree. But the point is that such a novel would make me think, make me realise where my barriers were. That is political. Merely a destruction of processes and peoples and politicians. Not. This is a really interesting point. We've, in a sense, discovered a subgenre within the subgenre within the subgenre, which is the. Uh, and Mike, Michael Dobbs is another example, which is the explicitly political novel, which is all about politics and almost nothing but politics, and, and yet, in some deeper sense, isn't really a political novel at all.